What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to the new year, January 1st, 2022. And we're kicking it off right. We're doing the patron picks episode, and the patrons have voted. And we're talking about Smith Chart. Imagine my face when they pick that. I knew I couldn't tackle this topic on my own, so I called in some uh, backup. And I've got Sterling Man N0 SSC to join me. So we'll get started here shortly. Go ahead and enjoy the memes as we kick things off. Uh, there was a comment of an echo in the chat. Am I coming through okay, everybody? Hear me all right? Okay, everybody says it's good, so all right. Okay, let's get her started. we got a lot to talk about, and boy, <laughs> if you don't know what Smith's charts are, hang on to your butts, all of them. Here we go. <laughs> and again, hey, thanks, everybody, for coming out. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your new year here, right? Saturday, New Year's Day, streaming live. So I got to stream. My Saturdays fell on Christmas Day and New Year's Day this year, which was pretty wild. So uh, sometimes it just works out that way. So again, thanks for coming out and clicking on the link and watching us have fun with all this stuff. If you'd like some reading uh, while we are going through this, I have put some handy links that Sterling has provided. Uh, they are, I found very helpful in getting some understanding of how all this works. So if you are so inclined, you have another screen that you can pull stuff up. You can pull up the links there in the description. And Dave, WK4T with a super chat. Thanks for the vids. Looking forward to 2022. You know what? Uh, if you if you listen to the podcast, I'm quite a pessimist when it comes to looking forward to the new year. But I'll, I'll try and stay positive. So do appreciate that. Uh, Want to go ahead and give my links here right in the beginning. Hey, look, and it's not working. Got to love that. When you restart your computer, it's sometimes does not like it so there we go uh hamtactical.com is where you can go for the merch for the ham radio crash course and i and i think i skipped over showing everybody this but uh if you go down to ft8 so, some of you will like this if you want to piss people off on an instant you know those people who don't like ft8 consider the <laughs> the ft8 waterfall zip up hoodie <laughs> and it is full bodied the whole thing is is 100 percent an ft8 waterfall and that's actually copied from my screen uh at home i i copied that for Leia, and she turned it into a design. So I thought that was uh, pretty good. So I'm going to bring Sterling in because you know what? We just got to dive into it because there's a I lot to talk about. Them radio waves Let me bring harmful. in Sterling so we can start that whole thing to talk about Smith charts. Sterling, how are you? How are you doing in this uh, new year? What's up, y'all? Um, uh, well, the new year's only going to go on for like what, 20, 12 something hours or so. I so don't know. Can't complain um, yet, right? Can't complain yeah, yet. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's right now we're having Seattle version of weather. It's like rainy and dreary. Mm -hmm. But it, yesterday it was Florida weather. And so I guess with with the new year, it just had to go out with, uh, here's all the cold that you were missing for the entire winter in St. Louis. And so far it's been a super mild winter, but yeah, you got to have four degree weather at some point here in St. Louis. But I don't know. I can't Is that really normal? complain. Is that normal? Yeah, you, normal is you get the tornadoes kind of mid-December, then that kind of gets down into freezing and then comes back up into Florida, like 60s, 70s, and then it just goes like straight down into like, I think the low tomorrow morning is 19 degrees, 15 degrees. Mm -hmm. So oh, we've got all the weather here um, in December, so that's January, but that's the weather. Everyone loves that, I guess, mm -hmm. but um, no, it's uh, good so far. Right we're, on. Gonna, we're going down the uh, the year of wellness. Our our uh, theme, oh, our yearly theme, our resolution is going to be the year of wellness. So like that's exercising, eating, being right, fit, that whole and thing. Oh. doing and and focusing your mental, like on mental health and all that stuff. So to be in present stuff, that yeah, kind of thing. Being present. I, I think I should definitely uh, pitch that to Leia. We 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 need a year <laughs> of wellness. I certainly need a year of wellness. Yeah. Uh, so okay, uh, boy. Again, patrons have, have voted, and again, over on the Patreon, I, I have a big, long list of, of topics, and I don't know why I put this on there, um, maybe because I wanted to learn more about it, but I said, let's let's talk about Smith charts. And the more I got into it, and particularly when we talked last, 
when we were looking at that my go-to antenna, uh, we we talked a little bit about Smith charts, and I realized I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is pretty cool. This could be fun. So the patrons have spoken. They want to talk about Smith charts. So. Given your background a little bit, you are, uh, well, why don't you just mention it? I don't want to put words in your mouth so people know a little bit about what you do. Well, uh, I'm a ham, a ham radio operator, just like all of us. Yep. It's kind of like a, a ham, ham anonymous meaning, an alcoholics anonymous <laughs> meaning. But uh, Hi, Sterling. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been in ham radio for like 10, 13 years almost now. Mm -hmm. I guess it's 2022. So when I was a kid and I'm an extra class now and that, basically propelled me into a career in electrical engineering. So now I'm working at a big aerospace company, building fighter jets and doing communication systems for them. In my in my working time, I actually hardly, I think I used a Smith chart once in my entire career of eight years now. Um, and every other time has basically been for fun mm -hmm. um, at work, basically doing projects and, and things like um, they call them in the defense industry, IRADs in yeah. independent research and development, right? So we get to do cool little projects. And one of them was like, literally, um, uh, you know, antenna um, analysis and, and matching an antenna, a weird antenna that had a, a crazy impedance. And that's basically what we're going to do here today. Um, and that's perfectly, you know, a perfectly, uh, perfectly good use for a Smith chart, along with a whole bunch of other things. Besides the working environment, I've done... I mean, consummate amateur radio things. I've done home brewing. I've done poda ing and soda ing, and um, I fixed an amplifier, like a fifteen hundred watt amplifier tube amp up for um, a local ham. Um, so repair and and getting my hands dirty, soldering and all that stuff. So I've I've been everywhere, everywhere, man. So and you're kind of. And you're incredibly active with youth on the air too, Yoda. Oh, yeah, I forget about that. Yeah, yeah. That's the, all the technical side, but the I think the most more the most time I spend in ham radio is is on the uh, what do you call it the philosophical and the youth engagement advocacy side. The um, philanthropic is is that philanthropic? The right word? Yeah, well, philanthropic? yeah. If I had money, um, yeah, I no, throw that's at, right. But... You gotta have money to, to be philanthropic. <laughs> it's like <laughs> mentally philanthropic. I put yes, my time, your time, yes. and 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 try to give back to the hobby and, and getting more youth involved so that they follow my footsteps as testimony. You know, to get an engineering career or a STEM career, um, yes. you know, to make a, a whole bunch of money and have a good time. You know, doing stuff you love um, and you know, advancing the state of the art and especially mm -hmm. in radio. Um, I just, you know, love wireless and radio and antennas so much. I, I feel like we're doing, uh, in America in general and even region two, everything other than like the, the Western, Western, far Eastern, or the China, Asia area, we're doing ourselves all a disservice by not uh, putting a lot of focus in engineering, um, STEM and math and all this, especially these niche parts like RF yes. engineering. Like you see a lot of stuff like 3d printing and, um, a maker movement and that sort of thing, hacking and 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 even even in RF engineering, we've seen things like Hack RF and GNU Radio and et cetera, et cetera. It, it's but a like, great time for that. I mean, with Raspberry yeah. Pis, Arduinos, and and you know Hack RFs, all that stuff, it's a great time for this. It's beautiful. Yeah. I, th I think it's. I hope I'm I'm much like you. I'm an engineering optimist. I want more engineers out there. A diverse group of young people all coming up and getting into engineering is a it looks like a bright mm -hmm. future to me. So. Yeah. And at the that. same time, we need more of those for ham radio and Absolutely. You can't have like all hams be appliance operators that have no idea what's going on under the hood, you know? So hopefully the Smith chart, this little um, patron's pick will help yeah. expand our minds a little bit, you know, take this scary looking chart and make it, make us like realize that it's not so scary. It's actually really simple if you know how to apply it to your specific problem, because it can be applied to uh, hundreds of specific problems, if you will. So, and, and, and I don't even know all the ways to get into that. So, sure. And we, we do, we'll do have, a yeah, we do have a, a obviously Sterling's going to show some examples and we're going to walk through it, but I have a physical example of a circuit here that we're going to kind of diagnose. So that's going to be mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Well, I have a minute. Big thank you to Vern Six for the super chat. He says, Happy New Year's all. Really appreciate it. And TC Fitz a little bit earlier sent a super chat. Thank you so much. He says, Happy New Year's Day from Livermore, California. So appreciate everybody with, well, appreciate all of you out here, but also appreciate the super chats. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so Sterling, what is a Smith chart? For those, maybe there's some people who haven't seen it, or maybe they have seen it, and they they just become immediately repelled by the look of it, that they go no further into what it actually is, or even what it's called. 
Well, a Smith chart is basically if if an alien race just came down and dropped this super handy tool that does a bajillion different things. Just kidding. It was actually invented in like 1930 something uh, by an engineer at Bell Laboratories, the mm -hmm. famous Bell Laboratories, who did a lot of amazing things. Uh, I forget. I hadn't. I didn't do too much research before I came on, but. Essentially, uh, Philip Smith in uh, Phillips. he he discovered. Duh. I just pulled up the yeah Philip Smith. Of course, I I've got a link Smith. to the Wikipedia there, so you can follow along, you guys, uh, as you go through this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the sorry, Wikipedia page is is a brilliant page too. It's it really well written, written, and it has a lot of good examples. So mm -hmm. I kind of am paraphrasing this. I sure. Through it. Yeah. No. Um. It's a the Smith chart is a tool. It is a nomogram. It is a basically a circular. Um, graph that we use as um, RF engineers to plot impedances. And those can be um, impedances or admittances, a, which is like the inverse of an impedance mm -hmm. or, or of a reactance, okay. reactance, admittance. And then you have like um, other other things like that you can rotate the whole entire chart to turn it into something that might be a little simpler to use in your specific problem. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go into maybe go into some kind of that. So let me show you Let's what we've all it. been waiting for, the Smith chart, this Whoa. ugly, scary looking um, thing. Um, so how do you begin with this? Well, first of all, and I'm going to like see if this works with some drawing. See that? Yeah, you can yeah, see, you can see it. in my head, but cool. Um, it might be kind of blurry. I don't know how. It's a little blurry, but you know, everybody, it's a big circle, and there's a, it's like a wavy grid, right? So you can yeah. see the the grid lines. It it is actually like a graph, but it's just in arcs, right? Is kind of a way right. you, could, you could kind of describe yeah. that. So first of all, the the one thing I want to mention in the Smith chart is the is the prime center is kind of your reference point. That's your one point zero, your fifty ohm point. That is. If you're looking at the chart, 50 ohms with zero reactants. So what we have on the Smith chart is this line, which basically goes from, I think this is short circuit or, and then this is open circuit and I might be backwards. Short, open. I believe you are correct. <laughs> and and if I'm wrong, somebody in the chat can hopefully, but, you know. Yeah, it, it's the same concept. If, yeah. yeah, so this would be a short circuit would literally be a dead short with no reactants. As you go up and down from these points, you in, you add those that's increasing reactants. And again, here we have up is capacitive, or no, inductive. Re you actually have a little hint here. It says inductive reactants component. Okay. As you go this way, you add inductance. And as you go this way, you add Let's see, negative JX, which is capacitive reactance, I think. So L and C. So yes, this I remember basically that from our from our whole go to antenna. We were looking for capacitance because something that's capacitive might be more in line with like a dummy load, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this side is inductive and this side is capacitive. Okay. So what what we have here now is essentially a graph where you can just stick a thing, boop, like zoom in here and you can find the impedance of that spot right there okay and it's kind of hard to read all in the numbers and figure out what it is exactly but let me wipe out all of the stuff i've drawn so far yeah so you're, you're picking a point there. in space there in that uh and and i think i read that it's all real numbers or right all positive numbers in the smith chart yeah so you're well you're picking a no, spot you can, Go ahead, go ahead. You, you can have positive or negative. It depends on, like, even here, it'll say, like, um, inductive reactance component plus mm -hmm. JX slash Z0. Or okay. you can have negative, which is down oh, I here, see. negative okay. JX. But you can have that be plus if you wanted to using just a different unit, like susceptance or something like that. But, okay. Um, Typically, anything like up, anything up here is plus. Anything down here is negative. You can also use instead of pluses and minuses, like a like almost like a rectangular coordinate plane. You can use angles. So you have mm -hmm. like an actual angle, theta, um, and it's positive as you go this way and negative as you go this way. Okay. So you can define a point based on a magnitude, like a vector, a magnitude, and an angle, mm -hmm. and those are polar coordinates. You can also 
do rectangular coordinates. So you have the plus r plus, or you can just mix that plus, jx, right? Everyone might remember that r plus jx. It's the resistance. Let me clear it up here. Yeah. Resistance plus j is the imaginary term. X is reactance. Resistance, okay. reactance, right? Mm -hmm. So you can say any point is r plus jx, or it is a... Um, what does the magnitude look like? I think a gamma angle or angle gamma, something like this angle. I forget the actual term of that, but same thing. And you can actually convert easily between the two based on a point on any point. On oh, interesting. Chart. Okay. So you could, uh, you can display it or write it in, in different nomenclature, depending on how right. you convert it to, like you said, uh, what was it? Acceptance. And if you flipped it, <laughs> yeah, um, susceptance, susceptance or reactance; those are those are the the corollary or the the conjugates of each other. Okay. Substance, subtest, subsets. How do you say it? Susceptance. <laughs> susceptance. <laughs> so, use your example. You've got a, a point somewhere in this chart, and so right. I, I'm sure people are thinking to themselves, "How does one get the point? Where does the all point right. come from? Where, where? What does all that mean?" Okay, so let's find. Let's just I I just put a point down. And you can find the re resistance by following the straight line. This is the resistance line. Okay. And you put that line and you basically find your constant resistance circle that intersects with that line. Okay. So, so for all these... you hams, you're putting this in terms of 50 ohms, right? In your head. So you're thinking 50 ohms, 50 ohms. But that X, that's not 50 ohms, right? right. This could be your antenna. It's all wonky. Right, it, it's not matched right now. So, okay, sorry. Can go ahead, continue. No, no problem. You're right. So, 50 ohms is this point in the center where I just marked, and your point is up here. What is that? So, first, like I said, um, I guess I should mention these circles are constant resistance circles. Okay. So, everywhere on that on that circle is 50 ohms, but ah, okay. only in this spot is it uh, um, zero reactants. Oh, it's only at okay. the center. Okay. So that's right. where it will actually resonate in our case of, of being uh, a ham. Or it will right. resonate the most efficiently. Right. Well, only if it's at that if, if it's at that prime center, the, yeah. it'll resonate the most efficiently. If it has right. reactants, then it will burn up power in, in apparent power or reactive power, right? Right. So that 50 ohm point and where we are, where are we? So we want to know what what is the resistance of that point with, that we marked up here. Yeah. We follow the constant resistance line it's about right here it's a mm -hmm. 0 0.4 okay yep okay and then we can drag that basically follow that line down wrong tool <laughs> <laughs> there's your follow X. that constant reactance line down to here and i'm just a little bit off so it's like 0 0.375 okay and that literally multiplies times 50 to get the resistance which is Believe it or not, an iPad doesn't have like a quick calculator that you can just like calculate on it. But right, bear with us. Yeah. So you said three uh, seven, sorry, point three five. Zero point three seven five times fifty is eighteen point seven five. There you go. So that's your R mm -hmm. equals. Let's get a little smaller pen here. Uh, what is it? Eighteen. 18.75 ohms. Now what's the reactance? So just like how these circles were constant resistance, mm -hmm. these arcs coming out from the center, which is over here, ah. are constant reactance. Okay. So there's where you can find out what the reactance of, of said thing is. So you do pretty much the same thing. You get mm -hmm. to your point, which was here. We'll use red to figure out the reactance. And you trace it down... So it looks like 0.5. To where about, yeah, about 0.5. So about, we're right here, 0 .0 0 0.47, 0 0.46. Mm -hmm. So you multiply that by 50 as well. Okay. So far, I'm, I'm hanging right in there. <laughs> and that is 23 ohms. Okay. And that's J20. You always got to remember reactance is imaginary. You got to put a J. So you're, that point right there represents 18.75 plus J23 point something ohms. Right. Okay. So that's, 
basically what is that value of that point that's how okay. you f figure that out it's all written there and you follow these lines to figure figure out um, what a specific point is and you can also take the angle so from the center which isn't that it's over here you can take the angle it's use yellow for that to that point and the magnitude so whatever length that is which you need to use a ruler like a like a like an actual ruler. Oh, okay. And then and then measure the angle as well. And you actually need to use a protractor for that. I think you can also. But use what what will that tell you? That'll tell you the same thing. Same thing, but in a different oh, way. Oh wow! Okay, that is polar handy. coordinates. Pol okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So what you can actually do instead of using a, a ruler to determine the magnitude of that, if you draw as straight as an arrow line, which I think I can do with like a fancy thing, down. No, that didn't work down to from here to this like little um what do you call it like a ruler oh yeah i see that down at the bottom okay you can find i think the magnitude somewhere return loss reflection coefficient you can use this in some way to shape or form to like kind of shortcut your way to do that but i forget how exactly <laughs> um but that's that's why there's this thing on the bottom there's also some like tricks like you can actually get um swr you can get return loss, reflection coefficient, et cetera. Um, that is um, relative to your 50 ohm center. So that particular spot, if we are looking at the reflection coefficient E or I, I don't know, return loss. Let's do return loss. I like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, it is, well, what does it go like this way? I don't know. So it's about like 9, 10, 10 ohms or so, okay. or 10 uh, dB. Right. So that's like marginally bad <laughs> not a good swr it's right. like two to one you can read off a two to one swr right there it says swl but swr okay so the, that uh, so far it's making sense so going back <laughs> a, a step well, i mean i'm following you at least i don't know exactly how i, I would use all of this well i think i i mm -hmm. think i kind of do um but so your x that you drew right this hypothetical x right um you you're plotting this based off of something real Right. Mm -hmm. So how does one get the X? Right. So I, I have an antenna analyzer that? that does it right. That, that will do a Smith chart. But is there different ways? Is that something? Yeah, there are other ways. So you can get that X from the actual component values. So if you have say if you have a known circuit, oh. like an RLC circuit. Sure. OK. You can calculate that circuits output um inductance or output uh, impedance mm -hmm. and then you can plot that here on the smith chart wherever it might lie um and you will have to do some math to to do the r one over blah 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 this that and the other thing basically i think if you go to that wikipedia page if we all remember it actually kind of goes through how to do that right around the practical examples somewhere around here. I think this might be helpful. So yeah. You so can you, it on my uh, so can you then hypothetically w just figure out where potentially an antenna would live on that Smith chart without necessarily plugging it into an analyzer? No. An antenna is a magical device, right? Okay. An antenna is is a is a lot of capacitance and inductance and resistance all lumped into a piece of wire. Right. And so you wouldn't be able to by by just looking at an antenna um, be able to plot that unless you measured its capacitance and inductance and resistance independently, which is you very can. hard to do. You, you um, could though, right? Yeah, you could, but they make meters that will do that automatically right. and give you its impedance. And that's why you have like an antenna analyzer that does all of that work for you. And a lot of those will plot an actual Smith chart. And a lot of people will go like, well, I'm never going to use this, right? Like, right. why would I need to use this? Um, and there's one reason, one really good reason for that is to match that antenna to 50 ohms. Right. So, um, that actually leads into a good question. Don and 5 skt in the chat says, what if you're dealing with 50 ohms instead, or sorry, 75 ohms instead of 50 ohms? Sure. Just so this change Smith the number? Chart, <laughs> yeah, this Smith chart is, is reference to one. Like, so that right. center number, all you have to do is normalize. It's called normalization. Um, the uh, your, your numbers to your reference impedance, which 
in the normal case is, seven, is 50 ohms. But if you are a, C, a, K, a CATV or maybe a cellular network person who likes 75 ohms better, you just, instead of putting 50 in places, use 75. Nothing on this chart is um, intrinsically specific to uh, 50 ohms. Mm -hmm. So we 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 took your little X example and we found out we've got let let's call it an antenna. I know I have an RLC circuit here that we'll probably talk about here shortly. But sure. we have this hypothetical X, right? And yeah, there's a new one. Um so let's call that your antenna. So mm -hmm. that's not 50 ohms with zero reactants. And and that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the right. 50 ohm match and we want it to be zero reactants, meaning it's resonating. So on the frequency that we want to resonate on. So how do we go from X is bad to that one position, that, that center circle? So there, yeah, it's really actually quite simple. I think oh, there I was love like simple. something on, this is great. <laughs> on Reddit that, that uh, showed it. It's in one of these... Uh, this is all the research I did before this, so I don't look like too much of a fool. But um, oh yeah, and do, right and do send me that link, and I'll I'll add um I'll add that link to the description as well, so everybody that's sure. watching you can follow along. There, there. I bit, literally just googled Smith chart oh, okay. <laughs> and then pulled a bunch of things. But like this is this is essentially like the bottom line: matching, aka antenna impedance matching, means moving toward the center of the Smith chart. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you add series or parallel components. And this graph kind of gives it away exactly what happens when you add said series or parallel components, and that's resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Mm -hmm. Those are the only three components that ever really matter on a, on a, a, in a matching circuit, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't have like diodes or active components or anything screwing up. We don't want to talk about 3D Smith charts here, right? Just 2D. No. We, we only got an hour, right? And and I want everybody to understand, Sterling is doing a fantastic job of trying to, to convey this information kind of at a starting point. You can go down a deep, dark rabbit hole in the Smith chart world. So yeah. that's not necessarily what this video is for. It's incredible how many things the Smith chart can do. Like, like what, like, if you want to add a stub, a matching stub, if you want to do like, like hardcore filter design, um, in, in many different planes, it can get crazy complicated. But basically, matching this antenna is as simple as going from that X and then getting to that center point mm -hmm. as efficiently as possible. And to do that, you can only follow the lines on said chart. Remember, ah. these are constant resistance lines. These are constant reactance lines. And as you go one way or the other, Mm -hmm. You're either adding C's or L's or resistance, but you can't really, you don't really want to add resistance, right? Because no, right. you're losing then... power. It's just going to heat. So we add shunt capacitors, parallel capacitor, which is a parallel capacitor, series capacitance, inductance, all of that stuff to basically scurry our way to the center point in some fashion. I don't know. We're basically making, building a circuit that gets us to that point, right? We're going on a journey to find the 50 ohms and uh, zero reactants, right? Yep. So going back to this thing, you can see that from that red dot here, adding a parallel inductor goes, let me take a quick, let me figure out screenshot. Yeah. Adding a parallel inductor, which is this guy here, goes mm -hmm. that way towards the center. Which and you're always going in clockwise or counterclockwise, right? Is right. That, yeah. When you're when you're in a rea when you, when you're adding reactances, it's a it's a circle. Always right. A circle. The direction you go does it matter which direction? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. That the, the arrows are there for a reason. Is I guess yeah, where I'm going with yeah. that. Yeah. There are um, there are some mnemonics that are really handy to remember. Is it like, like you're supposed example, to hold up your fingers and do something? Oh no, the the right hand rule different. That's different not this. Thing. Okay. Or Eli the Ice Man. There is one called like. <laughs> The general makes you go clockwise, like moving towards generator. I can't remember other ones, but a lot of this is like just kind of like forced memory. Okay. If you use it a lot. This is all stuff from college, I assume, right? That yeah. You, you had to use when you were in college, and now you well, just do it for fun. Well, even in college, they hardly off. use Smith charts. Um, really? Okay. Just because, like, <laughs> no one matches circuits anymore. They're all matched when they come out of DigiKey or whatever. I bought like, them that way. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Until you find yourself on an IRAD and you have to diagnose a very <laughs> persnickety antenna, which definitely like a very happens. unique problem. Exactly. Right. right. So so back to it, like it's kind of obvious here what we want to do from this like this red dot mm -hmm. moving up to the center is to add a parallel inductor. But you could also do some crazy stuff like add a parallel capacitor and then a series L and then a series C because remember the the it always moves in a circle. Um, uh, okay. And if you okay. follow these these arrows to get to that point, um, you can you can do a lot of things to uh, basically an infinite number of ways to get to that center point. And the easiest way is obviously the most efficient. So going back to our drawing, the um, and I have to like kind of look back and forth between this to remember. We want to we want to go from here to here. Mm -hmm. We want to add. Let's see what's easy. A parallel Looks C. Like parallel C. Yep. Goes in a circle outward from here. To but notice left. that like right. if I make an arc, I'm not following any lines. Right. I'm, I'm going counter to lines. Mm -hmm. And what this problem is showing is that this chart, the specific Smith chart, isn't so good for adding that specific parallel C. It, you can add like a, an actual circle, put it on here, and then, well, I don't know how to make it oh, circle in oh, this Oh, I see what you're saying. So the, the, the image that you had with the, with the arrows, that was um, for a chart that has the, the, the parallel C circles. That's sure. not necessarily the same as the one you have right here. Right. And I what see. you want for this is something that looks like, I think it has like both of them, the um, and admittance C is and is what we're talking about. the, uh, what is it, reactance charts on one Smith chart. So not all Smith charts are uh, the same. So make sure right. you're, you're looking at the right one, particularly if you're going to add capacitance in this case. You, <laughs> you tried quick. it. <laughs> I saw what you did there. <laughs> yeah, it didn't nice. work. S M I T H C H A R T. Chase. And here we are. Oh yeah, it looks totally different, right? Well, it, it's still a Smith chart, but it's got more information there. Yep. So let me add that to here real quick if I can mm -hmm. figure it out. Nope, this is the, this is what we love in the live streams. We're doing it. We're doing it live, literally, whiteboarding like we're. <laughs> so currently unavailable. Nice. That's just yep. what you want. Thank you, Google. Mm hmm. There's some that's already filled out on here, mm -hmm. but basically what it is is just the same chart rotated 180 degrees. That's what it, that's what it seemed like to me, right? Okay. Yep. Just let me. Oh, it can become copy. kind of chaotic then. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm assuming the green is now yep. the, the set of circles we're, we're paying attention to. Yeah. And it, I bet you this is making the like compression oh, yeah. or whatever on YouTube totally it, it's great. scream. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So let's use a really obvious color. Maybe this one. Blue yeah. would probably pop on that one because it's red and yeah. green it looks like. Let's try not that one. <laughs> there, that, there you go. There you go. Yep. So we we're in kind of a random spot. And yeah. Remember, like I said, adding that um, this red chart over here is the original. So remember the that's the normalized impedance chart, like we had above here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it also adds the admittance, which is the green one. Okay. And and that is your constant, basically admittance and susceptance lines, which mm -hmm. are the corollaries or, or the conjugates or the inverses of resistance and or uh, impedance and uh, react reactance and the other thing it is forget the all my terminology yes so <laughs> it makes it a little easier even though it's really complicated looking to kind of think okay i need to add a series capacitor which is this way and then i need to add a i see remember okay. what was the uh other that was... thing i wanted to add I can remember the tab. Did, you took a screenshot of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. So that's series capacitance. And then, yeah. So I'm going to go that way, which is a series capacitance because it's going clockwise in that arc. Okay. That basically gets us back to the center. So. And we can do math on those lines to figure out what, what L and what C I need to add or what parallel L and what series C 
I need to add to get to that point. And, and that would based off you... of the length of those curves. Yeah. Okay. Well, based off of yeah, that the, something like that. <laughs> so, um, this is also based off of what frequency you may be on too, right? Mm -hmm. This is only one frequency. Correct. So yeah, okay. So say you did a measurement at like fourteen point two five zero, that's that point right there. But if you do another band, it could be way over here. So that circuit that you just made is not going to apply to the one you did at 17.35 or 7.35 megahertz or something. You have to do a totally different circuit. And that's why antenna um, matching units are adjustable. They have a huge inductor and a bunch of right. capacitors bunch that of are relays. adjustable. Mm -hmm. And so what it's doing is essentially moving that point around a Smith chart and like this, essentially, until it gets to that center <laughs> point. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. if you can see, like, um, what is happening to the impedance? It literally will be following a circle, following another circle, following a circle, and then basically let's give it a little algorithm. Inductance. Let's give it a little capacitance. Itself. Let's give it a little yep. of this. It's 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 cooking up a, a a recipe of inductance and capacitance to find you the match for your your antenna for your frequency exactly. that you want to be on. <laughs> that was that took me a minute to realize i'm like okay what is this showing me it's like ah it's one frequency and you can see mm -hmm. that um on the on the little device that that you know our little um circuit that that sterling had us uh or had me bodge up um mm -hmm. i've got it on a breadboard and uh i can i can run this app and i can give it a frequency space and that frequency space will then you can kind of see it plot on an arc that we can you know walk around a little bit yeah so that's that's fascinating uh there was let's see yeah. And then, but if you, mm -hmm. if you say you plot that antenna on, like, you know, that an antenna say works really well at that 50 ohm point at a certain frequency, mm -hmm. but if you keep measuring it, you'll find that that spot is merely a single point on this like weird looking spiral I fact them radio waves is harmful. that might look something like that, mm -hmm. where you have like certain points like here, here, here that actually have like pretty good impedance. And that's what like, say a dipole might look like or a, yeah. an off center fed. And, and basically what you're looking at here, if I look at it in a, like a Viswar chart, an off center fed dipole works at for 3.5 megahertz. We'll also work at seven, 14, 21, et cetera. Mm -hmm. in the, and this is the Viswar chart. Right. Right. And you may not and be so, capitalizing on the lowest point, but it's, it's in the wheelhouse, if you will. Yeah. Right. And so That's why NFED at... half waves are so interesting, right? Because it's one wire in a, oh, in yeah. a matching box. Yeah. And and essentially those those bottom points of the visoir correlate to the closest approaches to the prime center of the Smith chart. That so doesn't that's necessarily like, mean zero reactance. It just means that that's right. the match. The closest for, for point. Fiance. So it doesn't have to be on that specific line. Mm -hmm. um, let's uh, do another thing. By we the way, have thank antenna. you to... Diego for the super chat, WD, sorry, W2DRR. Hi, Josh, finally figured out how to get in this chat. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for motivating me to pass my technician studying for general now. Congratulations, Diego. By the way, everybody watching, we're going to go do a, an after chat after this. So if you want to keep the ham radio fun going, it won't entirely be Smith charts, but um, if Sterling has time. He may take a couple of questions right there in the beginning, um, but it is a ham radio chat. So all your questions are welcome. So feel free to join us. And the link is in the description for our discord. Sorry, Sterling, go ahead. No worries. So grats, um, Diego, you're, you're getting yeah. your, your feet well into, well wet into the, you know, black magic of, of Smith. Yeah, chart. we're literally throwing, congratulations. Here's your technician license and here's a Smith chart. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Oh yeah. So essentially what that, what this correlates to, look at all the points that are on the prime Closest to the prime center, you have one here, 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 here. Oh, and right, because so it's a be, circle. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to make sure. Okay, okay. And these these don't have to be necessarily on a circle. This is just one other particular antenna. Um, but when you when you measure an antenna, it often, as far as I you know have known, will you know do some kind of weird circular thing yep. that it, it, for like a really broadband antenna. Mm -hmm. Other antennas will be very much like make might just look like that you right. know where you don't have anything very close to the center it's just not a good antenna at that particular impedance anywhere but right. yeah anywhere you might have antennas that look like this 
where <laughs> your antenna is not connected. <laughs> right, 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 right. If you if you ever have a, a measurement that um, on a Smith chart that is on the outside ring, mm-hmm. as far away from the prime center as possible, on all frequencies, that means you are unplugged. <laughs> right, and you Got should it. plug the antenna in. That'll I actually help. this this really came in handy because one of the local hams I actually did the amplifier work on. Mm-hmm. Um, he plugged his amplifier in and started working, and one day it just stopped working. Like the antenna went dead silent. Mm-hmm. infinite visoir and so it's like what's going on of course he put an amplifier on his on his line so that kind of gives you an idea of like you used to use 100 watts and now he uses 1500 watts so something might have burned up but right. wouldn't things like burn open and you know not short so we oh, looked at oh. the smith chart and sure enough it was shorted and it, it was looking it was uh everything was like measured over here on the side and i was like why is it shorted so we looked in his ballon which had just collected all this water and it had carbonized and arced the lower um, connector on the, on the ballon. So that gave us like this looking at the Smith track gave us like a, a good indication of what happened. Like it's short, it went short instead of open. Where would we look at to basically determine the failure of that particular antenna? So that's another thing that Smith track might help with. You know what? Whether it's shorted or opened. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Amateur radio on the air, he just posted a question. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it looks like a device displaying a Smith chart would be very useful for use with manual tuners. Mm-hmm. It, it would be. be, right? Because exactly. what is a manual tuner showing you? It's in showing you inductance and capacitance. Yeah, because normally when you're tuning on it with a manual tuner, you're just kind of like looking at a single number and trying to get it low as possible. Right. If you had a Smith chart, you could literally see what is happening whenever you are, you know, at that point, whenever you are moving that inductor, oh, that's too, that's the wrong way. Now I'm going to move it this way. Okay. Um, we'll get it to right here. And now I'm going to add some capacitance and then boop, you're already there. Like you could tune super quick versus like trying to find the right spots. Um, and that's essentially what a manual tuner or an automatic tuner is doing. It's going, it's, it's, me- it's moving one thing at a time, finding its lowest point, or it's uh, it's it's closest point to the center, mm-hmm. and then adding another thing, finding its closest point, and then doing other things to get to that point. And essentially, you know, that tuner might kind of do this kind of zigzag shape, which is why it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I amateur radio on the air. Gosh, I wish I would have thought about that beforehand because I have a manual tuner. I could just bodge up real quick. Maybe maybe we'll fool around with that on the after chat. But that's a yes. that's a great a great point. Um, yeah, I love that. So, do you want to? You want to take a look at this uh, crazy circuit that I built? I guess not crazy. Sure. But... So kind of the thing I had an idea for, like, what is this been sort of good for? We have like a, a black box circuit um, mm-hmm. that, you know, I told Josh to put together and not tell me what the components are. And then we can do a, like a, an actual um, legit measurement on his, on his nano or his rig expert, right? Yep. And and see if we can figure out what those components are. And I'll I'll admit I forgot to do the homework to actually like figure out how to calculate said components. But conveniently, somebody already did the homework or did the math for me in the form of your particular antenna analyzer. But with all yes. of the things we learned today, with like how to match that to match circuits, what we can do is take that point at that frequency and figure out like what components do we need to add and subtract or add. Um, to get to 50 ohms to use that circuit as a matching circuit or match that circuit to 50 ohms so we can actually use it on a radio right for whatever so, reason so just for everybody's reference i have a resistor right here this is a breadboard right so if anybody doesn't know the power lines go across right so they go they go this way so if you plug in a source here right your positive and your negative could be either side um, i then have that going into this other trace which goes into this inductor and then it goes along this trace to a capacitor, and then it goes out um, right here. So I could have built this differently, but this is pretty straightforward. And then on the outside, so on the rails here, I have one wire and another wire, and that connects to this BNC breakout post. Okay, so your shield and your pin on your coax, if you will. And then that runs to a piece of coax, which goes into my um, Rig Expert Stick Pro that I have here. So. That's kind of what I did. So what do, what do you want me to do? You want me to see if I can run that Smith chart? Yeah, see what you can see from from that circuit, and I'll, you know, then we can figure out how to match it to 50 ohms or something. Okay, let me 
see if I can get this uh, streaming thing working. It is working. And basically, right. what we're looking at here is a is an RLC circuit, R, L, so I guess CLR <laughs> circuit, right? Right. Series. So let me see if I can, let me do this really quick so you guys get an idea of what's going on. Let's do. So that's my, again, that's my circuit. I want to shrink this down a bit. So I got all the things on the screen. So into my um, Rig Expert Stick Pro, I have connected my phone, which is the vertical ant scope, and I'm running that app right now. And you can already see there's a reading. It, it may be a little difficult to see, but um, it's that little orange dot that you can hopefully see right there. Does, do you see it? Um, it's below that that center circle, right? That, that one's position. So um, I am looking at uh, frequency. I, I did move the frequency around a lot. In fact, why don't I change that to make it a little bit more amateur radio focused? So I'm going to put the start, well, I'll put the center frequency somewhere in the uh, 14, uh, 20 meter space. So I'll do just like that. And we'll do one little spot there. So it'll take a, go ahead. No, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a span of 10,000. Oh, you know what? I think I have to, uh, I don't think I connected. Let's see. Yeah, it's got to connect uh, on the initial setup. You there? There we go. Okay. So now we're going to go back in 14.225, which is general portion starting band, and I'll make it 10,000 kilohertz wide. And it's pulling 100 data points. And that is the SWR chart. So let's flip it over to the Smith chart. And there you go. Boy, Sterling, that doesn't look so good. Ooh, it's way over there, yeah. So one thing you can do, I don't know if it works in, in, in here, you can scale a Smith chart to, to go in and out. But it, if it's on the edge, it's on the edge. Yeah. I'm kind of making sure I've got all my. I'm worried that maybe I had a short there or something <laughs> or an open. I guess that wouldn't have been an open, right? That would have been a short if it's on that side. Yeah. So what's that? Is, so. is my circuit screwed up? Did I screw something up? No, I don't think so. Okay. So then now what? <laughs> now what? Um, so conveniently, you're a rig expert. Um, shows you already like what it thinks the R, the L, the C, um, the R and the X, the SWR. It does all of this stuff for you um, to figure out, to, to basically suss out that RLC. And what we're kind of doing here um, in, in the background, if you will, is figuring out what those components are. This is called black box. Like if you have a, a mystery component or especially if you... Um, or trying to reverse engineer something, you can do, uh, Smith charting is really good at black box reverse engineering. You can figure out if it's a series or a parallel circuit. In our case, we wanna match it. And in this case, it's way over there. And so what's happening is it might, these these particular values of components, which are totally random. I don't know if, I hadn't coordinated with Josh. I maybe. just grabbed a bunch of stuff, yeah. Yeah, just grabbed a bunch of stuff. And they might just be way outside of this particular frequency of operation so for ham radio purposes this particular set of components is pff, no bueno well let's um, let's try moving up the frequency space then so maybe we'll make it four four six will that work so i'm moving into vhf uhf space mm. and you got to keep in mind here that what was it 446 oh, it, megahertz it jumped uh yeah 446 kilohertz right oh 446 kilohertz, so like super low frequency. Oh no, it, we're, am I missing a whole set of zeros? I am. Uh, oops. No. No, I had it right. Yeah, kilohertz. I wonder how much capacitance a breadboard has at 70 centimeters. <laughs> yeah. Because a, a breadboard is like a, you know, parallel traces of like, Co um, not copper, but uh, little little spring-loaded steel. Right, right. That's true too. 
And Maybe so they can really mess up circuits when you're doing. Oh, like okay. The there you go. There's a better stuff. reading. So oh, okay. that's beautiful. Uh, there you go. That's what I, I moved it to two meters. So it 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 seems to work. Mm -hmm. This circuit's a little bit more in space for two meters. Does, yeah, it's not going to so, work for twenty meters. So <laughs> no, but but you're doing the thing like you're reverse engineering this random circuit you put together, and so now you found like almost the perfect perfect spot um, where where it seems to be pretty close, like kind of going up in frequency if you move that thing counterclockwise. Um, or I guess, yeah, move the move the circuit. You can almost find like where it's SWR is the best, which is right there, probably right there on that like prime, right there on the, the re yep. resistance line, 2.4 yep. SWR. So heck, that's tuned well enough, but to get it to be better um, at that particular frequency, what should one do? In that particular spot, you probably need to add resistance um, or, or subtract resistance, I guess, if you're, Trying to go closer to the uh, closer uh, towards the center, away from that zero from the left side. But like I said before, when you add resistance to a circuit, change you know you're adding power. But it is an RLC circuit, and that's what it's there for, anyways. Um, right. So in my to, in case, order to match it, if I wanted to do, if I wanted the center frequency to be the the point where there was a match, that one four six dot five two zero. Um, you know, we're we're close with mm -hmm. the resistance to that, and, and it's showing the marker at 182.993 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or not point, but you get the idea. So wh what would I need to do to the circuit to bring it closer to that center frequency of 146.520? So closer to the, when your, your marker is currently at 162.993? It is at 182.993. Yeah. So put the marker on, on the frequency you want. Okay. And then we can read off of the, read off the reactance at that point, or the impedance at that point. And then from that point, if you want to match that to 50 ohms, we need to add the circuit to get to that point. There it is. Right. So we see it's got a R of seven and an X of 17. And a, and a Z, that, that Z uh, with the absolute value, that's actually like the magnitude line I mentioned earlier. So I oh, could, okay. you know, take from the, the center and, and go out to like 18, but that is referenced to 50 ohms. So I have to do 18 divided by 50 to get like the actual, um, basically length of the line to draw on my Smith chart mm -hmm. to get to that point, right? Um, but I won't do that. I'll just kind of like, yeah, right about here. Right? Yeah, we only got eight <laughs> minutes left anyway, so you know. Sure. Go, yeah. So you have your your mystery circuit, and you're like, all right, I need to get it to fifty ohms, and we don't have our admittance chart, so we'll just do it by uh, adding R's and L's, right? Yeah, because that's what you got. So, so this is a uh, every solution is a nail, or every problem is a nail in this case, because <laughs> you got this chart, and this is the hammer. <laughs> yep. So we can you can follow a line here and follow a line here, and that is adding a I think if we go back to to this. We are adding a series resistance. And we're adding a series inductance. And so basically to match this circuit to that point, we're going to need to ch essentially change the values of those components or add an inductor and a resistor in series to that. So basically it will look like this kind of circuit. Mm -hmm. Add an extra R and an extra L. Oh, and right, because you could either change the part that's in place or you could just add more crap onto it until it got you yep. where you wanted it to be. So, yeah, in this case, we looked at this, we wanted to, and we and we use this little cheat thing to see series R, series mm -hmm. L, series R, series L. Mm -hmm. And that gets us to the prime center. And those, like I said, series R, series L, we figure out what those components are based on their distance and angle or whatever you want to do to, to suss out. Like the, you have to do some like, trigonometry essentially to get to the um, component value and then you add those in you remeasure it you realize it's wrong because you did something wrong and then you <laughs> jury rig it anyway you know because we're hands right we're not doing this like professionally right right so that's an interesting thought there too so um from an inductor standpoint like i just put a bunch of coils on that thing there's probably way too many mm -hmm. coils for hf to, to for as many coils as i put on it um you could just go in there and and if the point we want to be is at 146.520 you could just add take off coils 
and and retest it mm -hmm. and see where you yeah. ended up, right? Yeah, or add. So in this or case, add. we are adding. Oh, add. Um, right, right, right. We're adding series inductance. Yeah. And and so you're gonna you you just need to add some some more turns more to that inductor, to to essentially if you just did that, you would go this way. Well, wrong wrong tool again. You would be going this way from that. Right, and then that gets you the fifty ohms, but then you got to walk that in for the uh, for the resistance. Yeah, you still have to add resistance. Aha! Uh -huh. So it is a way of like actually, kind of uh, at, at any space, and I think I, I'm saying space and time, but I mean frequency. At any mm -hmm. frequency, you can diagnose what's going on. Yeah. With with and your in antenna. that particular case, you might want to do. You might want to add. You can. It's much easier to add a lot of resistance with like just plopping in a new resistor, mm -hmm. um, but to add an inductance by turns that adds a very little amount of inductance. So if you start here and you want to go that way then you're going to be adding a tons and tons and tons of turns. But if you uh, add that resistance and go this way, it's a lot fewer turns, a lot less inductance if you're starting from here and going to that way. It's very small amount of inductance, right? I, so I guess, just a few turns. Yeah. So I guess the other, the other now we, we talked about this as far as if this was an antenna versus just an RLC circuit. If this was an antenna, we don't want to necessarily add resistance, right? Because right. then it's been, then you're, you're, you're going into dummy load land. Yeah. And so if we had the other chart, which is essentially this chart, but this way, <laughs> right. we, oh, you, you can you add it. the other active components to completely reduce any, any resistive losses. So in this case, parallel or uh, capacitance or, or inductance, which looks like, you know, something like instead of that, it would be inductance, capacitance, or maybe a capacitance here. And essentially what we're starting to get into here is matching networks in the form of L and pi and T, um, which are extra class exam questions. Yeah. So, so coming full circle on this metric. <laughs> who knew that they would all lead back to getting your extra exam, everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the preferred method of doing it, obviously. So you don't have those resistive losses. Yeah. Okay. Well, man, that that hour went by real fast. I feel, um, and it's it's like one of a bajillion hours, right? Right. There's so much that can that can go on with this thing. Right. There's this is engineering coursework at the you know at the introduction <laughs> yeah. level, but you can just see that it's just going to keep going deeper and deeper. Um, yeah. As and we, people as in the out. chat are like, "My head hurts. This is Daleks. This what's going on? I haven't learned anything." But <laughs> that's the that's the thing. Go back, just go a little slow, earworm. go slow, and you know, you, if you have yeah. an antenna analyzer, particularly one that can spit out a, a Smith chart, you know, like again, mine right here, right, my my guy right here, you know, I'm literally uh, picking that marker frequency, right, which is the frequency I want the the circuit. Oh, and it's gone, the circuit to be <laughs> resonant on. Uh, so that's that's the point of all that too. So you know, keep that in mind. Um, did it come back? It didn't come back. It's okay. But keep that in mind. That's kind of what we're we're looking for when we're playing around with this stuff. So yeah, yeah. So like the rig expert, the the nano VNA has a Smith chart and, yes. and integrated too. And I always think I you know kind of bottom line, don't don't like ignore it. It can be a really useful tool in a lot of cases versus over like a, a log mag or a visoir or a return loss chart that just shows you that one line of like basically how matched is that particular and that's, antenna or that's circuit. just resistance right for visvoir yeah. that's just resistance and we're saying no it's visvoir is visvoir is taking that smith chart and doing a quick calculation to give you a single number of oh. like how um, oh, sure. matched it is so it can be resistance and and reactance together um i mean for example um back to here you can you can see like the swr I see. It's actually like on this this thing, and and to get to that point of any point, you basically draw a straight line down from any point on the thing on the Smith chart to read off like a, an SWR. Mm -hmm. And here at the center, you might notice that every point on this, every line on this on this thing, supposedly measures a one to one SWR. But then you also have this spot over here where it's you no, know, this is a different one, att attenuation loss. So I don't know. There's um, there's math that thing is doing to get to that SWR, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially. Um, and, and what the Smith chart is showing you is actually what component of 
resistance, capacitive, or and, and capacitance and inductance is that visoir. And that is super helpful when it comes to things like matching or filters or understanding is your antenna shorted or open, um, stubs and all of the things that I, you know, wish I had 20 days to <laughs> go through. Maybe right. that'll be our next, uh, my next YouTube adventure is like all of the Smith chart things. That yeah. would be fun. I think people would like that, <laughs> particularly if you did it in like, uh, you know, like bite size, little, little, little chunks, yeah. you know, that'd be cool. I think that'd be I helpful. will tell you, um, one of the best things to start out in, in one of the, you know, greatest minds in terms of hams who can explain, sta explain things without stammering and stuttering like I do is W2AEW. He has a video on Smith charts and the basics and kind of almost everything we said here in a 24 minute video with his nice calming voice and some nice charts and stuff to look at. So I would, I would look there too. So, uh, sure. yeah. So go, go to that channel as well. W2AEW. Uh, wait, W2AEW. Uh, that's ARRL, but I'm trying to think of where I know him. Oh, okay. I think I've definitely been on, on his channel. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got hundreds and hundreds of videos on, yeah. on all things like actual circuits and mm -hmm. hardcore black magic. So and definitely even, go even check like that out. A lot of an Anna VNA like measurement. And how he can use the Smith chart to to sweep a circuit and match it and filter it and all that stuff. I love it. Okay, cool. Well, Sterling, thank you so much. Uh, you know, if you do have time, feel free to join us on the Discord. I I don't know how many oh, Smith yeah. chart questions we'll have, but uh, at the same time, it'd be nice to have you there to, for some backup. But but you're just a, a, a all around ham radio knowledgeable guy anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's a real jack of all trades, master of none. So that's why it's like you were maybe expecting a professor of Smith chart analysis no, to come yeah. in. It's like, no, I'm just your regular ham who kind of knows a little bit about everything. Um, but that's good because I think I think one of the things I wanted to dispel about all this is um, that it's some it is black magic and in, mm -hmm. to a to a degree it's it's heady <laughs> and it's certainly scary looking. But you you can figure this out. Anybody by you, I mean everybody watching. You can right. figure this out if you just take a little bit of time and and uh, go through it and figure out how to move around the the Smith chart. You can find a lot of useful things about your antenna or whatever circuit you're working on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. See, so I'll hang out. And... Yeah. All right. Well, then I'll 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 hang up here, or or you can hop off, and I'm gonna wrap up the show. But again, Sterling, thank you so much for taking the time out of your. Uh, your New Year's Day here. You oh, could have no been problem. relaxing, but instead you're talking about Smith charts. <laughs> and my brain is starting to fry. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. explain this right. Yeah. It's the you, ADHD, you know. <laughs> you did a really good job. I, I really oh, appreciate you appreciate taking the time. It. No problem. Thank it's, you. It's really my pleasure. I, I like to try to explain things. There's an Einstein quote at my university, you know, um, engraved into the ground. As it says, if you can't explain it uh, well enough to anybody, then you just don't understand it enough yourself. So... Here's yeah. me going out on a limb to try to teach something super hard to help me understand it a little bit better so I can feed that back and, you know, get this cycle going. Right. And so hopefully that going back to the beginning, like mm -hmm. that just helps us, you know, get more educated, more technical, more, you know, useful as hams and engineers. 100%. Like. Yep. I've been shocked right. how much I've learned from just doing these videos. Right. Like, I, I mean, you gotta, you gotta put some time in to figure it out before you, start yeah. making a video on it but okay <laughs> for sure yep thank you sterling all right. appreciate thank you it. all right catch you a bit okay all right everybody and uh links will be in the description again for some of the the stuff that sterling has and i'll try to make sure i update that um when we wrap up the show here but really helpful particularly this uh microwave 101 smith chart basics you can go through here. At, there's a cake with a Smith chart, Smith chart on it, which I thought was really good. And it breaks down what it is, impedance, admittance, and, and what it's all about and how you work through the impedance grid and the admittance grid that, that Sterling was talking about. So consider checking that out as well. Okay, guys, uh, again, patrons, you voted for this. I hope this was uh, helpful and enjoyable and interesting. The Patreon supporters really help to you know keep my channel going and, and make some of this stuff possible particularly when you know I'm buying gear like you know the the ray expert and some of the other items that I have here on the table that I use for the videos so really do appreciate that the newsletter went out for um for this well the newsletter went out for December <laughs> so we're good on that and we're rolling right into January as we kick off the new year 
We'll have another series of votes uh, about two weeks from now. That way I give everybody enough time to vote on the next episode. And uh, that's always fun. These are always uh, an interesting challenge to me because I kind of never expected Smith Charts to be the one that would get voted on. But sure enough, it did. And I think that's great. Uh, but at the same time, definitely needed a call in for backup once I started diving in a little bit more. I think a lot of people are like, hey, my my uh, nano VNA does this. I won't have any problem with this. But oh, no, there's a, a ton to know about Smith Charts and really the applicable uses for it, which hopefully we at least... Um, Sterling at least kind of whetted your appetite to hopefully learn more. So appreciate that, Sterling. Really do. Thank you uh, again for taking the time. Thank your wife for me. I know he, he said she's watching The Expanse right now. So good. Found a good distraction because The Expanse is wonderful. But <laughs> uh, and for everybody that has questions in the chat, the best way to ask those questions right now is to join us over on Discord. I will be on the Discord after I wrap up this live stream, and uh, we do a live voice chat so you can ask in person with your uh, questions in voice so you can have follow-ups and, and that whole thing. And, and we really try and help out best in, in the online format of Discord. I will also do uh, I will also be on Twitch. So if you search for Hammer Day Crash Course on Twitch, you will find me. And if you want to just text, you know, chat over Twitch, that'll work too because you'll see the Discord text chat. Um, when when you go and join me on Twitch. So Hammer Radio Crash Course on Twitch as well. I'll be live streaming in about 10 minutes or so. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. I will uh, talk to you later. I'll play out with some memes. 73. And Nicholas Hopkins, I hear you, buddy. Uh, uh, congratulations on getting your tech and general. And I will be on HF for uh, doing some FT8 during the live stream just because that's easy to do in the background. If you want to try and follow me there, join me on Twitch and you'll see what I'm working on. Uh, or, you know, just, just click on I know for a fact them radio waves Franklin Diaz, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, yeah, so if you want to follow me there, that's the best way to do it. So I'll probably be on 40 meters, 40 meters FT8. And see you in the after chat.